Well, he went to Boston English, and uh, when he graduated in 1912, he came to Amherst as a freshman in Massachusetts, Ag and the Mass Aggie, Massachusetts Agricultural College. He only stayed here one year. I don't know what it was, maybe Amherst in those days. And by the way, to get to Amherst, he came by train and trolley. Train uh, either to perhaps Holyoke or to Springfield and to Holyoke. And then the, the trolley line, by the way, you can still walk that trolley line uh, if you get up to the notch near the, there's a, 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 an office of this. So I, I've done that. Uh, he came uh, in 1912, uh, spent a year here, uh, and moved uh, back to the Boston area, transferred to MIT, and the faculty at MIT knew him. And my father insists this is the only way he got in. Anyway, he was admitted without examination. But he didn't stay there very long. Again, I don't know what the issue was, but after one year, he transferred to Tufts. He was studying chemistry all along in each of these places. He was, at the beginning of his senior year in 19... 15, yeah, he would have graduated in 15, uh, when he was impacted, if I can use that awful word, by, again, the war in Europe. I mentioned earlier how the outbreak of the Russo-Japanese War uh, affected what might have been his career had he stayed there. Well, the outbreak of World War I ravaged the Jewish communities along the Pale of Settlement from Latvia all the way to the Ukraine. The reaction in this country to the suffering of Jewish communities was, I wouldn't say instantaneous, but people like Louis Brandeis, who had, had yet, who was yet to be named to the Supreme Court by President Wilson, called on the Jewish community to do something. What happened was that three separate help organizations came into being. One called the Central Relief, which was set up by the Orthodox community. Another, the name of which escapes me for the moment, but was set up by the German community. And both of those came into existence in 1914. And at the same time, something called the Joint Distribution Committee, you perhaps are aware of, uh, was created to actually affect the, the transmit, the distribution of the food and the money and whatnot to the communities. In 1915, a third co committee was set up, the uh, uh, People's Relief Campaign, whose initiators were members of the trade union community, Jewish trade union like the International Lady Gamas Workers, uh, and uh, uh, the socialists, Jewish socialists. And by this time, my father had become a Jewish socialist. He was invited by, and this is curious, when that organization came into being, and it was, as, as I said, trade union leaders or whatnot who uh, helped bring it into existence. In Boston, it's, there was an affiliation, an affiliated branch, the chairman of which was Louis Kirstein. Now, I don't know if the name Kirstein means anything to you. If you were interested in dance, it would be as his son, who was a developer of ballet in New York. But Louis Kirstein was an executive of Filene's department store. He was a businessman. And yet he agreed to chair this committee. And my, my father, who by this time, as I say, was, uh, uh, it was in August, entering his senior year at Tufts, was moved to want to do something. Uh, I suggest that after all, having uh, been born in Latvia and having left it when he was 14, he was probably new people there who were being impacted by, by the war. At any rate, he offered his services to the committee, and he was hired. He was, at this time, 1959, 24. He was, I guess, 24 years of age. And so he was hired as a fundraiser to raise funds for the People's Relief Campaign in New England. Initially, he was just going to be a summer job, but he was so able, so efficient, that they took, added to his duties and finally asked him to do it full time. And for the next six years, 15 to 21, yeah, six years, that's how he worked. Traveling over New England, organizing fundraising campaigns, helping people remit funds to relatives in 
in uh, the old country.